The following is a Thorpe TV production, part of our YouTube Friendly Series. Part 2 in a three-part series, Your System. Today we look at the most effective tool in your system, the shotgun. Well, let's get started talking about the most effective tool in your system, the shotgun. You know, for years, I was not real fond of using a shotgun in my system. And the reason for that being is the light trigger pull on shotguns. All shotguns have a real light trigger pull. And I, going back to my first, if you saw the first of the series on sidearms, yeah, I'm not real comfortable with anything that's got a trigger pull I can't back out of. Which shotguns just don't. They aren't designed to be used in that way. They all have a light, clean trigger pulls. So that, that has always made me hesitant to embrace the shotgun. And it really wasn't until, even with the training I'd had prior to that, it really wasn't until I had gone through a couple courses at Gunsight on the Mossberg 590A that I really started to embrace the shotgun. And that being said, I, th I thought what I'd do today is start with the first one. I, the first shotgun I used heavily when I was working. Because I wanted to kind of show this to you so I could discuss why I chose this to use and why I found it to be a handy shotgun. You know, the big thing that makes a shotgun truly effective, if you go back to the long-standing argument, the 9mm versus the 45, and nowadays everyone, including the authorities, have all decided that the 9mm is just as effective because we have these new wonder bullets that apparently expand to several times their size. So, and for some reason... The 45s aren't able to have the same bullet, I guess, and expand to several times their size, even though they make 45 plus Ps. The velocities should be up there enough to do it. But even disregarding that, you want to argue which one's the best. They all pale in comparison to what I'm going to show you right here is the 12 gauge rifled slug. That's what makes this the most effective tool in your system. And for years, I've missed out on that because. I was really leery of that single trigger pull. And we're going to get to this later, why I embraced the uh, Mossberg 590 so much. But let's talk about this first gun, which has been in my system for, for decades now. This is a Rossi double barrel. And I think, I think you'll probably look at this and think I'm nuts. What an odd thing to have as part of your system, especially considering what I was doing. But you know what? It's got some real things going for it that worked out well for me. The first of which being, it's a short-barreled gun, so it's pretty maneuverable in tight spots, and yet when you look at it, the average person, they see a hunting gun. which can give you the ability to use this a lot more than you would, say, a Benelli M4 or that Mossberg 590A1. It, it, there are certain situations where you can actually walk through the room with this and no one gets upset. See what I'm saying? So it came in handy for that reason. And number two is the way it's set up, it's a hammered, muleared, hammered gun. And the Moss, or the, the Rossi um, manual says it's perfectly safe to carry it loaded because the hammers don't touch the firing pins and you can't discharge it till you cock the hammer. Now, I've carried it fully loaded for decades and never had a problem, but I, I would say that if you drop this you and the, the hammers hit something, I think, I think that they're maybe misleading you there, so don't take that as gospel. Or, or the fact that I've carried it for decades loaded like this and not had a problem as meaning you can. 
because I don't know that it is particularly drop safe, but I did use it for years that matter with it loaded because it couldn't discharge, of course, unless you might drop it. Back to my, my disclaimer here. <laughs> but it wouldn't discharge till you cocked the hammers. And that provided me with a very effective two-shot system. And of course, you can reload fairly fast, but that was never the intent in my system. The intent was to use the two shots and immediately move on to my sidearm. So now it's kind of got a little bit of different position in the system, but we'll talk about this, my system later as it is today. But at the time, this worked, this worked as a very handy tool in a 12-gauge shotgun that I could have two shots off. I could have it loaded and get two shots off very quickly without it being a horrible concern as long as it's within my control of having some accidental discharge because of the hammer system versus a regular double barrel shotgun that would just a regular double barrel shotgun is cocked as soon as you close it it's cocked ready to fire even with a safety on it I'm not as comfortable with that as I am with this where I have to literally cock the hammer first so it was something I could use comfortably and it's an effective tool in the fact that a, a 12 gauge shotgun is one round out of a 12 gauge shotgun is going to be far more effective than a, one round out of a 9 millimeter but it's also effective in convincing somebody to maybe back off on what they're doing. So it had a place in my system back in the day, and that's why I use that. And I still, to this day, have four of those left. But if you watch my first episode here of this series, you'll know why I only have three that are working, because one of them has already started to be cannibalized. Because I didn't have parts, all I had were the firearms. And that gun hasn't been made for a long time, and although you can find parts for it, you can't find the parts that break that you need. You can only find the parts that nobody ever breaks. <laughs> and that's the way it works. That's why you got to have your system, and like I said the other day, have a backup. Here's your system right here, but I've got two more just like it that are working, plus I've got one that I can cannibalize. So if you got three of them, you can at least cannibalize a third and keep maybe hopefully keep two and last at least keep one running, you see? But if you have some parts, hopefully you wouldn't have to cannibalize any of those three. But going to the 590A1 and having gone through courses with it, a little more comfortable with it. And one of the reasons I, I chose the 590A1 is this this ambi safety on the top. Cross bolt safeties in me are, yeah, I'm not really fond of them. It's easy to knock them on and knock them off. It's a little harder on the, for me at any rate, on the safety mounted on the top to keep from accidentally taking the safety off. These Mossberg thumb safeties are pretty darn positive and they're fairly close to flush on the receiver. Yeah, I think it would be really hard to hit that on something and take the safety off where you can bump a cross bolt safety and put it on or off. Pretty easy, I feel. So I, I was more attracted to the Mossberg 500 versus the Remington 870. And that's how we end up ended up with this in the system and for a number of years this has been my go-to shotgun but the problem is, you know, it's got a heavy barrel, and the reason for that is Mr. Holster has, has wrecked a lot of barrels in his life. Yeah, I've, I've damaged a lot of barrels by, yeah, well, they get heavy use and get whacked. <laughs> and you'd be surprised at how many hard heads it doesn't take to, yeah, bend a barrel up. So... I like this because it's got a heavy barrel, but I found that I don't use it that much because it's pretty heavy. And if I go down and 
I'm on a four wheeler or something and I have to get off the four wheeler and I got a quarter of a mile or so I'm walking through brush, I got to take this with me. I can't just leave it on the four wheeler. So eh, it starts getting heavy and at my age, who wants to drag it along? So it, I found that I really haven't been using the shotgun anymore in my system as much as I did back in the day. This was actually used a lot. <clears throat> but this is what's become really great is not really a shotgun, it's a firearm, but I call it a shotgun, is a year ago when they brought out the Mossberg 590 shockwave and I picked one up and I've had one in my hand every day since. So not only is this a very effective tool, which we're going to talk about in a second, but it becomes a, a tool that's not just in my system, but one that's in my hands every day by virtue of the size. And I'm comfortable carrying it around, so I do it. Where instead of leaving it behind. This, of course, is not as effective a tool as that, even though it's the same system. This has a shorter barrel, longer sight radius there, longer barrel. This has no stock. I'm not going to shoot it nearly as accurately, as quick, or as fast as I am that. I'm not going to be able to retain it as easily as I can retain that. However, being shorter, it's a lot more effective in tight spots. And I find that by the use of a scabbard, I'm using this on, on multiple vehicles, tractors, bobcats, and so forth, where I wouldn't be able to use this. So that has become the primary, even though it's not a shotgun, the primary shotgun in my system is the Mossberg. Hence the reason we have the summer camo job, the winter camo job, and your basic black with a flashlight, which is getting used a lot in the wintertime here because the days are so short. I wake up and it's dark, and long before I go in for dinner, it's dark. So that's being used a great deal more than anything. So there's three to my system, just like we go back to the sidearm. I've got the main one, I've got a backup one, and I've got a backup to the backup and parts. And here, hopefully, this gun's been popular, the Mossberg 500 around for a long time. Hopefully I won't have any problem with parts in my lifetime, and it won't matter. But if I have to, I can cannibalize and still hopefully keep one running till the day I die. There's my system on the shockwave or shotgun now. Yeah, it's these. Maybe not the the most effective not having that stock, nor the ability to get the long range shot with a slug like I could with the 590A1 and that nice ghost ring sight and that bright sight on the front. Matter of fact, the shockwave doesn't even have a sight on the rear. I find that I sight on the rear with the those serrations on the receiver here. Use that kind of as my rear sight. And on the front sight here, I've got that uh, tritium night sight. All around, this is a far more effective tool, but if it's sitting in the, in the cabinet and not being brought along because it's too big and heavy for me to comfortably drag it everywhere I go, this becomes a lot more effective. And again, you're probably not going to be utilizing this in anything but an up close and personal matter anyways so some of those advantages on that really kind of fall by the wayside the true reason the shotgun becomes so effective is it's so versatile you can use bird shot which will be very effective show close up and personal and yet the fallout on it especially if you live in an apartment or some urban setting is going to be far less than using buckshot or a slug if you don't happen to hit your intended uh, target. And yet, very effective at short range. But I think back to the shotgun, the double barrel there, it, it's, it's got a bit of an intimidation factor 
multiplier beyond your sidearm and the effectiveness of the size of the round versus the sidearm what it can have in it it becomes very effective and therefore I think this is the most effective tool you have in your system especially when you're talking about something like this that can go everywhere I'm going. You also have the ability to like the sidearm but here it's a it's a real big difference to go from one type or size tool to another 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 410. And when you get down into the 410, you can get into a very, very comfortable, lightweight shotgun that is still very effective. A slug out of a 410 would, would be comparable to a 41 Magnum. Far easier to shoot than a 41 Magnum would be. Far more accurate with your sight radius on a full size shotgun and that shoulder stock than you probably would be. Certainly the novice would be with a handgun and 41 Magnum. See, so it's a lot more effective with less training than what would be a comparable sidearm. A rifled slug is going to outdo most any sidearm caliber you're going to find. Very, very effective tool. Now, like I did the other day, I want to talk about real quick the reason I picked what I picked. And of course, you know, my reasons for picking what I picked may be totally different than your reasons for picking what you picked. So these are just my reasons why I did it, picked it, and personally why I have this. Yours may differ, and as such, you should uh, you know, follow what works for you, not what, what I'm saying. Nor am I poo-pooing anybody that has any different concepts, because it could be the worst gun for me and the best gun for you. Number one consideration for me in picking a shotgun is its ability to be carried in a safe condition and this is the reason I feel really comfortable with a pump shotgun because I can carry it with in this case five rounds in the magazine tube the chamber empty and the safety on it's in a very safe condition when it's sitting in a scabbard yet when I need to use it all I have to do is rack the slide and load the chamber now I'm ready, and before I decide to shoot, I've got my hand on the safety, and a lot like that 1911, before I can pull the trigger, I have to make a conscious decision I'm going to use this firearm and take it off safety. Now I've got, albeit a light trigger pull, a little take up on it that I can back out of it. You have a take up till you get to that wall, and then a relatively light short trigger pull, but still some give that I can back off on. I'm very comfortable with this and using it that way because it's a very safe condition, and once I've pulled that trigger, now I'm back, I can put the safety back on, I'm in the same condition even though I haven't even removed the empty shell. And when I want to use it again, I just rack it and it's ready to shoot. Where a semi-automatic is going to automatically load itself and not give me that, that empty chamber I want after I shoot it. So. To me, this is a little more user-friendly for the type of use I'm putting it to. The other reason a pump shotgun works well is it's a little more forgiving of running 
different type of ammo through it. And this leads me to number two, the ability to use a wide range of ammo. If I have a semi-automatic, it may be that that firearm is a little pickier on the ammo and you need certain ammo to make that thing function correctly. Although nowadays, not as much as it used to be, but that's still a consideration. And here I've got a firearm that can take a three inch shell or a two and three quarter inch shell and it's not gonna have a hiccup because it's me racking the slide that loads and ejects that shell. A little more forgiving than semi-automatics and you also have the ability here in this firearm to shoot slugs through it because you've got a cylinder bore and no chokes involved that might cause a problem when running a slug through it. Ability to use a wide range of ammo would be number two. Number three would be convenience that being here the size and weight is convenient for me and I use it. If the gun is too large, too heavy to be carting around all the time, I'm not going to use it. What's the point of having it? That's what makes this the effective shotgun for me in my system is I wasn't using the other one because it's just so big and heavy I never took it with me. This I've used every day since. First it was the novelty of it. I just was having so much fun. I was carrying around, but now it just it's just become something I utilize every day and, and carry it with me, and I've got everything set up for it, and just not quite as effective as e or as easy to use, but it certainly is at close range just as effective as that is as far as the results. So there you go, guys. There's my system for the shotgun, the shockwave. Three deep, so I have backup and parts. And, of course, I still have my old system of the 590A1s, and they're set up the same and backed up. But if I had to, if things got really bad, I could sell these and be just fine with those three. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of my three-part series, Your System. Next week, we'll be looking at the rifle. I hope you come back and join me for that. Till next time, from Mr. Holster and Jack, go out and stay safe.